Welcome to Let Learn by Chetna Ramesh. Today we shall watch the story Gajar Halwa by Geeta Hariharan. Geeta Hariharan was born in 1954. She grew up in Bombay and in Manila and was educated in these two cities and later in the United States. Her maiden novel The Thousand Faces of the Night won her the prestigious Commonwealth Writers Award for 1993. The story has four main characters: Perumai the protagonist, Perumai's mother, Chellamma the neighbor's cousin and Perumai's mistress. The story is narrated by Perumai in first person. It begins with Perumai's hard life at Salem. Her mother was always screaming and her father had left the family. Perumai's mother went to work every day even though she was sick or had nothing to eat. She would leave for work at 6 in the morning after drinking some tea that Perumai made for her and she carried her youngest child with her to work. She worked at the highway they were building near the village. Young Perumai would get her brother Selvan ready for school and then begin her chores for the day with her baby sister Tai. Perumai's chores included collecting firewood, fetching water from a long water queue and scrubbing clothes at the river. People called her little mother. The irony was that at an age when she should have been at school, she was taking care of her siblings. Perumai's mother was doing whatever she could to keep herself and her children alive. The highway was built after 18 months and then there was no more work to be done. The rains failed for the second time and life became harder. Around that time, Chellamma was taking five of the village girls to Delhi with her and Perumai was sent with her to Delhi. Chellamma found a job for Perumai for 200 rupees a month. Perumai had to cook, clean, wash and look after her mistress's child. She also had to give Chellamma 50 rupees from her salary every month and she could send the rest to her mother. Chellamma lies to the mistress that Perumai can cook, sweep, swab and look after children even though she knows that Perumai has never cooked anything more than rice or gruel. And this is because telling the truth would mean getting 50 rupees less. When Perumai went to the milk booth to fetch milk, she made friends with other girls working in the same colony. Perumai learned how to shirk work, how to swap quickly, skip the corners under the beds and also to squeeze out the baby's stinking clothes with the crust drying on the diapers. One of the chores that Perumai had to do was to peel and grate mounds of carrots to make halwa. Perumai scrapes and scrapes. The carrots fall like thick orange gold raindrops on the plate. Scraping so many carrots leaves her arms stiff and her fingers feel as if they'll never straighten out again. Her mistress pours a little mountain of carrots into a pan of milk on the fire. Stir! Stir! says the mistress. Don't stop for a minute. So Perumai stretches her fingers and begins to stir. Stir! Stir! Barks the mistress. Don't you dare stop. Stirring round and round, scraping the sides of the pan round and round again, her cold body bent over the pan on the fire, Perumai's arm is numb with pain. Perumai says that the gajar or carrots absorb and suck like a greedy, round, red mouth and swallow the sugar, the ghee and the milk. The gajar halwa consumes everything just like the city consumes everyone who work there. And this is an indication of the life ahead of her for Perumai. And thus, the author has effectively portrayed the plight of the poor in rural India that forces them to reach Delhi in search of a better life in quest of a dream. The hard realities of life take away their childhood and their innocence. And with that, we come to the end of the story, Gajar Halwa by Geeta Hariharan.